So let's close with this. You know, so what, so what is the evidence of faith, right? Because we, we started talking about the question, you know, if we, if we believe we're saved, or how do I know I believe? So I showed you a lot of ways how you do not determine that you believe. So that leaves us with the question, well, then, then what is the evidence of faith? How do I know I believe? And the answer is a lot simpler than you think. You know you have faith because you know you have faith. And what do I mean by that? It's because you know what you believe. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need evidence of faith because you can see your faith. So, you know, we talked about, you know, believing means that you accept something to be true. Um, you know what you believe. That's why when somebody says, how do I know I believe? They're looking for evidence outside of faith, but you don't need evidence for something you see, right? Um, you know, that's why it's only possible to lie to somebody else because I don't see what you believe right like I don't know what Elizabeth is thinking um, she doesn't know what I'm thinking that's why I can lie to her because I could lie to her because I could say something that I'm not actually believing in my head but if Elizabeth could read my mind I can no longer lie to her can I because if I say something and she could read my mind then she knows I'm lying. I can't lie to her anymore because she knows what I'm going to say before I even say it. And if I say something different to what I'm believing, then I can't lie to her. Now that's why I believe you can't lie to yourself. Because you could, yes, you could believe something that is a lie and be deceived. So you could deceive yourself. You know, like you could think you're a great Christian and you're not a great Christian, and, but you're thinking you're a great Christian. You're not lying to yourself. You're not knowing that you're not a great Christian, but telling yourself you're a great Christian. You're, you're just believing that a lie, which is, you know, this is what makes you a good Christian, and you've applied it to yourself. So you can't lie to yourself because you know what you believe. So you can't at the same time believe something is a lie, but also accept it as truth because you know what you're believing. You know whether you've accepted it as truth or whether you haven't accepted it by truth, uh, as truth. Um, so that's why you don't need evidence for your faith, because you can see it. That's why God doesn't need evidence of Abraham's faith in Romans 4. He's not glorying before God, because God can see his faith. He doesn't need evidence to prove his faith. But if he's going to need to prove his faith to other men, therefore that's when the works comes in, and he's trying to show his faith to other men. But even at the end of the day, it doesn't prove that your faith is there, because you can do works without faith. So I hope that's making sense. So, so why did I name the sermon, you know, the evidence of salvation? Because I, you know, I call it the evidence of salvation, but we've been talking about the evidence of faith. Well, because you can see faith, you don't need evidence of faith, right? Because you can see it. But when we talk about the evidence of salvation, I don't know if this is groundbreaking for you or whether you've realized I'm coming to this conclusion. But Hebrews 11 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So salvation is what we don't see. What is the evidence of salvation? Faith is the evidence. Now why is it foolish to, to ask the question, well, how do I know I believe when it's something you can see? Because then we delve into the question, well, what's the evidence of faith? But that's a foolish question because evidence doesn't have evidence if that makes sense. If something is evidence, it doesn't need evidence of that evidence. Does that mean, let me give an example. Like let's say, let's say I own a car and you guys haven't seen the car, right? So now you're believing, do I have the car? And I say, well these keys, and this analogy is not perfect, but let's say, you know, these keys are evidence that I own a car. Right? Because why would I have car keys if I didn't own a car? Well, and I, I could have, you know, this is where the analogy fails because technically, you know, I could have keys and not own a car, right? But the, the analogy fails there because God says if you have the keys, you have a car, right? Because he says if you believe, you have eternal life. So that's how we get our assurance. So if I have keys, according to the analogy of faith and salvation, if I have keys, that proves I have a car because this is the evidence that I have the car. So faith is the evidence. Now do I need evidence to prove to you that I have keys? 
No, right? Because you're seeing the keys. So why would I need evidence to prove to you that I have the evidence of the car when you're seeing the evidence, which is the keys? Does that make sense? So that's why it's silly to ask the question, well, what is the evidence of faith? Because faith is the evidence. Faith is the evidence that you have salvation. So it's silly to ask the question, what is the evidence of faith? Because you don't need evidence for something that you can see. And we can see our faith. We know what we believe. That's why we know that we're saved. And the reason why people doubt their salvation based on whether or not they have faith is because they are giving faith an evidence that is not an evidence of faith. Do you know what I mean? So we talked about the evidence of faith and they're giving them circumstances, feelings, emotions, desires, works. But these are not evidence of faith because faith doesn't require evidence because you can see your faith. That's why faith is the evidence for salvation because faith is what you can see to prove what you can't see, which is eternal life, which is salvation. So let's just end on this thought. You know, it's funny because, you know, that's what it's like with doctrine often times. Sometimes the answer is so simple because the answer really is simple, right? I mean, I could have just said to you at the beginning, well, we, we know that we're saved because we believe and faith is the evidence. But sometimes what complicates the truth is false doctrine. You know, false doctrine makes the truth complicated, but at the end of the day, um, truth is, is really simple.